Hi, in today's tutorial, we're going to look at creating your own mock-up template so that you can reuse it over and over again. And all you'll have to do is change the title and change the images of your product. So let's get started. I'm in version two of Affinity Publisher right now, and I'm going to go file and new to create a new file. So I want to make this 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. So if you need to, you can change your document units here to pixels and then enter 2000 by 2000. I'm going to use a DPI of 300, even though technically you, this is going to be for screen, you could get away with something much less like 144. So let's, let's actually do 144. This is just for the screen. It's never going to get printed out. I don't want to include any margins. I want to make sure I don't have any facing pages on. And I don't really need any bleed either. So let's just get rid of that. And now I'm ready to create. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is just create my background. So I'm gonna grab a rectangle tool here and just start at the top corner and drag out a shape to cover my entire canvas. The next thing I'm gonna do is assign a color to that. So we don't need a stroke on this, so let's just make sure our stroke is off. And then for fill, let's go in somewhere into the pinks here and find a nice pink. How about something like that? And now the next thing I'm going to do, and this is optional, is I'm just going to add a little texture to this. So if you have photo, you can just click right over to photo persona for this. If you don't, you can always just skip this step as well. So I am in the brushes tab. So let's click on brush and under the brushes tab, I'm going to choose one of the ones that you can download when you sign up for affinity. There's some included kind of extras that you can optionally download and I'm in Daub W and W paperless. And I picked the second one here called Daub paperless O2. I'm going to make sure that my brush is fairly big and let's see what that looks like. It's not painting anything because I have to choose a color. So let's choose a color. I'm going to click on this. And let's just make it something a little bit lighter than the color that we have right now. And so now I can kind of paint over this, give it some texture. And then in my layers panel, I'm going to take that pixel layer that was just created by that paint. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down a little bit so that it looks textured. And I'm just going to redo that part. So let's go back a bit. And I just want to be not quite so thorough. So I'm kind of letting go of my mouse a little bit as I make these strokes so that it's just a little more textured. All right, now let's go back and just turn that down a little bit. That's a little bit better looking. All right, so we're done with the brush. Let's go back to Publisher. So next thing we're going to do is we are just going to add some elements. So let's add a logo. So I'm going to file place and somewhere in here I have a branding folder. Just grab my favicon and we'll place it down here. And then I'm going to grab one of the text tools and you can say myshopname.com and then with the move tool I'm just going to reposition that over here so there's the bottom and now let's create something across the top so I'm going to grab a rectangle again and we can draw out a rectangle up across the top here let's make this one a little bit darker color so I'm going to double click on this and we'll just kind of darken that color up a little bit. And in the layers, let's make sure that we put that on top of our brush layer. 
you notice that there was some texture in there. I don't want this for this layer, so I'm going to make sure it's on top of my texture layer. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create this little border here. So I'm just going to duplicate, so copy and paste, control C and control V. And then I can scale this down just a little bit from the corner and then reposition it. I'm getting these guidelines because I have my snapping on over here. So for this one, I want to come over to the fill, turn off the fill, and then in the stroke, let's pick a color that's just a darker version of what we've got, and then we'll increase the stroke weight just a little bit. All right, now we have our frame. Now let's go ahead and put a text frame in here, and I'm going to use that little outline we just created as a guide. And now I can type in the name of my product. It's way too small and up on the corner, so let's first of all center it over here, and then right next to that I want to pick the um, justified center in this vertical drop-down as well. And now we can adjust the font type. And so I can't remember what I used, but let's try this one. And then we can also adjust the font size. All right, there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is create the frames for the product mockups. So let's go ahead and draw out our picture frame. And then we can quickly duplicate this. Don't let go of your left mouse button and hit the right arrow key a couple of times and that will create some duplicates really quickly and easily. And let's move these around here. Now in my transform, which if you don't see it, go to window and make sure transform has a check mark next to it. I'm going to go into this rotation box and this one on the right, I'm going to do minus 15 degrees and then click on this one on the left and we'll do this one a positive 15 degrees. This one is still selected. I'm going to hold shift and click on my right hand one, go up to the alignment tools, align vertically to the bottom and that made the bottom of these even. Apply. Now I'm going to drag and select over all three of these and just go back to alignment and under align horizontally I'm just going to click this last one which will distribute them evenly amongst each other. The last thing I want to do is click this middle one. I just want to make sure it's on top. So up in these little icons up here I want to click move to front which is on the far right just to make sure that that picture frame is the front one. And now I'm ready to fill it. So I'm going to just select one of them, go up to File and Place. And then I've selected a few images already. And I will open my three images. That loads them up over here. And now I can click, click, click on the places where I want them. And they are all placed. So now I'm noticing here I have a little bit of a border here. If we want to get rid of that, we just go up to Stroke and click on this little circle with the line on it. So let's just get rid of all of those borders. And what I would do is then save this as um, a mock-up. And then every time I want to create a new product mock-up, I can just grab this. So once you have this made, all you need to do then is go to your pages window here and we'll just select this and right click it and duplicate it. And now we have a second one and you can go ahead and change the title of it, change your images by just clicking on an image, replace image, and then find your new file. Let's just say I want to put this one in there instead. 
You just find your new image that you want to put in there and you've got a new set. Now, in terms of exporting it, just go to File, Export, and let's see what our problems is. It thinks it has spelling mistakes, so File, Export, and we'll ignore and continue. And then I'm going to choose to do this in JPEGs, and my area will be All Pages, and I can go ahead and export this. And then let's take a look at what we've got here. So now we've got our first image that we created. And then when we duplicated it and replaced an image, here's our second one. So this is a nice, easy way to make mockups for yourself. And you can just keep building on this file by duplicating this over and over again so that you keep all of your same branding. You have lots of consistency. And it's really just a matter of swapping out pictures and swapping out text. Thanks for watching.